Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by Board Bia and StopFoodWaste.ie. This is the start of summer and it's time to check back in with our tomatoes. Our two tomato plants that we put in here are doing absolutely fantastically well and there's a little thing that we need to get stuck into now which is called side shooting, another one of those lovely little horticultural terms. So a side shoot is basically grows in the angle between this is your main stem and this is your leaf stem where the leaves are and you get little side shoots coming out here at a kind of a 45 degree angle and basically if you leave them on they're going to turn into another tomato plant. They kind of divert the energy of the plant away from uh, growing lots of tomatoes which is what you want. So you literally just sort of pinch them out and particularly when they're small very very easy to do you just sort of pinch them out like that. If they're a little bit bigger you can kind of bend them over and bend them back and stuff and they'll come off very easy. So you just kind of go through your plants. You need to do it every every week or so with tomato plants because they sort of regrow and you're just pulling them out there, each individual one like that until they're all gone. And what that means is that you get, you get a really neat plant for one thing and you get a very focused plant that's going to produce loads and loads and loads of lovely tomatoes. And the best way of making sure you get those lovely tomatoes is by making sure you've got healthy soil. In my experience, when it comes to growing, soil fertility is the most important thing to think about. When I started growing my own food, I was all about the plants. I was like, if I get plants, get them growing, happy days. I wasn't really thinking about the soil in which the plants were growing at all and, and the importance of that. And over the years, one of the things I've learned is it's all about the health of your soil. Yep. The way to think about it is if you, grow, if you grow vegetable plants in soil, they're taking the nutrition they need from that soil and ultimately that nutrition ends up in your body right which Via is all the good veg. Yep. Via the veg okay. those nutrients that the plant the plant has taken from the soil while it's growing you have to replace that so there's three ways three ways that you can do that organically right one of these three things you can pile onto the soil right and i know okay. you're looking at me I handling am. i am handling That's this commitment dude yeah. seriously so yeah. this this is this is horse manure in this case as well rotted horse manure and you could cover your beds down with this okay in, in winter time in then. the winter time yep. yeah when Good. the beds are empty pile a load of this on top and it'll rot down over the winter months option two is seaweed okay seaweed fantastic resource and if you pile this onto your onto your beds in the winter months it disappears into almost nothing ah. so it's broken down Worms have done the job of bringing all the nutrition. And like back literally, to soil. that is exactly as I picked it like salt yeah. and sea, sand and all. And the last one is compost. Now, this is homemade compost oh, that I've made in compost bays at home. So it's just like rotting uh, plant matter, you know, garden trimming, everything, everything yeah. in there. And over about four to five months, it breaks down into this lovely, into this lovely okay. compost. So this, unlike the stuff you're sowing your seeds in, absolutely bursting with life. All three things do the same thing. Okay. If you can get this onto your soil in the winter, onto your raised beds or whatever, you're gonna be in good shape, you know, one growing. way or another. Oftentimes though, you need to sort of do a bit of a supplementary feed along the way, right? Okay. And we've got a couple of different options here. So this lovely stuff is poultry manure. Yep. So it's basically chicken manure that's turned into pellets. And this is a fantastic for, you can sprinkle this on your beds during the year, you can sprinkle it around individual plants and stuff. Okay. And it gives an absolutely massive boost, full of nitrogen and it's really, really good. Okay. So these are nettles. Nettles are a fantastic natural fertilizer. You can make a liquid feed for your plants from, from nettles. And mm. these are, you know, abundant, all probably in your garden, in the hedgerows, in ditches and stuff, really easy to get. This one is a little harder to get. This is called comfrey, which is a herb. So what you can do is literally get like big clumps of these, shove them in a bucket, fill it up with water and leave it for about four weeks and you make a fantastic liquid feed, as good as anything you'd buy. Okay, it's gonna stink. It's gonna absolutely stink. But it's gonna be stink. full of nutrients. Yeah, nettles are more around the kind of leafy plants, so all brilliant for your brassicas, things that are okay. producing lots yeah, yeah. of leaves. Good. This is more for fruiting things like so tomatoes, tomatoes, pumpkins, courgettes, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Everything you see on the, on the table here is all about improving the quality of your soil, improving the fertility of your soil, and as we said at the start, it's all about that connection between the health of your soil and your own health. Yeah. Okay, Mick, it's time to practice what we preach. Along with regular watering, tomatoes should get an additional feed about every two weeks. We've made up some stinky comfrey tea that will give the plant lots of extra nutrients to help them grow. Unlike potatoes, tomatoes do need constant TLC. And once again, Mick has dropped the ball. 
Unfortunately, what happened here, we weren't on top of things enough, which is that this side chute, which started off as one of these tiny things in, in that angle, has now grown into a whole big start of a whole new tomato plant. And if you leave that grow, basically, it's going to take loads of energy from the plant and you're going to end up with, with less tomatoes. Because this one is so, so much bigger, if I try to take that off by hand, it's going to basically tear at the plant. So what I'm going to do is cut that off with a, with a secateurs, with a nice clean cut. The main thing for now is just to keep, keep all those side shoots out, train that up so that it sort of is grown in the right direction. And once you've got your plant nice and clean, it's focusing all its energy on producing lots of lovely tomatoes. So this is fantastic, a very, very proud moment. It is. We have our first tomatoes. I know, isn't that deadly? That is really lovely. So these are the fruit trusses and that's where the, where the fruit starts. So you'll notice there's no, there's no leaves on these ones. These are solely dedicated to producing the fruit. The fruit, yeah, like these are heroes here. They start off as little yellow flowers. The tomato comes underneath there. Yeah, only a couple of weeks before they're ready to well, harvest. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they'll start gradually and the fruit trusses grow up the plant. So as the plant grows, gets more fruit trusses, more tomatoes. But these ones Excellent. that have come already will be going red now in a couple of weeks' time and be ready to go. Yum. And they already smell delicious. Doesn't it? It's been 24 weeks since we planted those tiny seeds. And today we get to harvest. Look. Isn't that just glorious? They look so good, and it's just the beginning. If we're lucky and if we, if we mine these plants, we could be still harvesting by the end of October into oh, November. Oh, really? Yeah. What we're doing is harvesting the, the really red ones that are obviously ripe, and then the, the green ones that you can see here are being left to, to ripen. We can see the still side shoots here that need to be dealt with as well, which, so you need to keep the, kinda, keep the plant clean as you're going. And let's not forget my tumbling toms, which have produced their first tomatoes. This is the joy of it, getting these beautiful oh, the things. The smell is just Never amazing. ever refrigerate them either. That's the other thing. You do not refrigerate tomatoes. You want to taste them when they're nice and room temperature and you get the full, the full effect of the flavour. Yum. Yeah. To do these juicy beauties justice, Jack Kerwin from Sprout & Co has popped into the Grow Cookie Cafe to rustle up a trio of tomato tasties. So first up, anyway, we're going to just take the tomatoes that have just come directly from the garden. We're going to chop them up to nice sizes here. That way they don't sort of break down as you mix them. And there's going to be great colour as well coming through the whole bowl once you're finished. Then I've got these dried tomatoes that we left in the oven overnight at 50 degrees. And I'm going to add these in as well, so use about half the mix. Kalamata olives here, they also have a real saltiness to it, so they add that to it. And then some fresh basil as well, which gives a real pop of green and a really good flavour. This is all sort of summery flavours that are great and go really well with tomatoes. And now we're going to add some olive oil to it. So we'll mix it all around. Also, this needs quite a bit of salt as well. So I'm going to do some sliced onion and uh, red chilli in here as well to give it a bit of kick. You can do it nice and thin. As you can see, you've got lots of colour here. There's a huge amount of flavour in this. I'm going to set that aside now. We're going to move on to the pesto. So I've got uh, some charred red pepper here. So we're basically just throwing them onto a griddle pan and into the oven at 180 degrees for about 25 minutes. Got some sun-dried tomatoes here as well. Some parmesan as well. And then I've got some capers. So, and they're basically got a drizzle of white wine vinegar. You might need to add a little bit more throughout the recipe. And then uh, add in a little bit of maple syrup as well to give it a tiny bit of sweetness. The Parmesan's quite salty already, so you don't need too much in that. And then some pepper. And then I'm just gonna add some fresh basil in here as well. It's gonna give it a bit more flavor and some more color. Throw that in, uh, one garlic clove, like so. Finally, just some olive oil into the mix. looks like it's nicely blitzed. So you want to get good colour through and then give it a little quick taste just before you uh, take it out. If it needs anything else, you can add it in. Tastes perfect to me. I'm gonna set this aside as well. Okay, so this is our third way of using uh, tomatoes. Uh, this is focaccia that we made earlier on today. I'm gonna slice it up 
uh, into portions, and then this is going to be used to sort of scoop up all the different tomatoey flavors. Right. So this is tomato and rosemary. I'm going to throw it just on the pan here, like so. Little glug of oil as well. And I just throw it straight into the oven. Next up, we've got the garden greens. That's really just simple to add a bit of greenery to the dish, uh, mixed with some garden peas here. More summery ingredients. Okay, so just give them a quick mix. Very simple. Focaccia really only needs about a minute or two to kind of crisp up. So I'm gonna take that out. Okay, so now I've got the salsa, I've got the pesto, I've got the focaccia, I've got the green leaves. I've got everything now to come together, so I'm gonna plate it all up. Focaccia then, which is nice and crispy and warm. Putting it here. Pesto here, which is great color. And then finally, for an extra bit of sweetness on top of the whole thing, we've got some balsamic reduction here, which is just gonna drizzle on top of the whole thing. Do a nice color on top. Tomato three ways using Mick and Karen's tomatoes from the garden. Absolutely delicious. This is the joy of growing tomatoes. All yep. the different varieties, sizes, shapes, colors. It's just, this is what it's all about. Because you get such a great harvest from them. They're a little bit more high maintenance, but totally worth it. And look, Jack has shown us three ways. Yeah. Focaccia, pesto, and yummy salsa. I love this, this pesto in particular because it means, like this will keep in the fridge for ages, you can freeze yep. it. This is just really clever and really delicious ways oh, to, that is so to good. savor them and store them. Mm. No matter what the weather is outside, this is summer on a plate dude. Yeah. Mm. I absolutely love this plate of food. Yep. Well done, Jack. For more information about growing tomatoes and lots, lots more, head over to growcookie.ie. We'll see you next time when we'll be celebrating another amazing vegetable. Sponsored by StopFoodWaste.ie and BoardBF.